Hey, what is up everyone? Welcome back to another review and today I'm taking a look at the high grade after colony Gundam Death Side Hell aka the only time Bandai has done the Gundam Death Side Hell TV version aka Death Side Done Right. As usual, this video right here would not have been possible, as you can see from that black box right there, without those absolutely awesome people over at Bayi, because this was a premium Bandai exclusive, so as usual, the link will be down there in the description. Now let's get this thing open. So on getting the box open, this right here is one of your very typical premium Bandai kits, the old school kind of way. Basically, this is a variant of the standard high-grade After Colony Death Scythe we would have seen in 2021, now with some brand new parts exclusive for this box. So when it comes to the plastic we have in here, we've got a multi-colored runner A, B1, C1, and C2 are all grey parts for the different joints and parts like that. D is in a lighter shade of grey, which is almost a little bit on the yellowy side. E1 being all the white parts of the armor. E2 being the beams for using with this kit, that is two side beams and one shield beam. F1 and F2 of course are brand new for this kit. These are the wings, which make Death Side Hell look absolutely ridiculously cool. And this is a kit that does have polycaps in its build. Here's the polycaps, this is PC002. And finally, we do have some stickers in here, including some color correcting black ones, which is a little bit of a disappointment. But we'll see how that turns out. So when it comes to the build on the Death Side Hell here, this is very, very similar to what we would have seen with the standard Death Side with some new aspects. Now overall the build is a classic high grade build, that is polycaps for most of the joints, and there is no full inner frame, so it's just, for example, in the leg, it's armor parts, joint, then armor parts, nothing inside of that armor. Everything builds up nicely, and the new parts for this kit are very impressive. The main ones we'd see is the chest and the head. The head has a lot of detail, especially around the armor, and the way that the navy blue parts layer on top of the white inner segment. Now speaking of the navy blue parts, the plastic here is not the greatest, so that means when you do nip it, you will get white stress marks. Now I tried to avoid this by using the Racer Pro by Gun Primer, which does do very well but they have put the knobs on the kind of intersection of two parts, so it's easy to get these little divots, even if you're trying to avoid it. So it is a little bit of a old school, not great design, especially in the forearms. Last up then, and one of the coolest aspects of the Death Side Hell is those big shield wings. These have a lot of detail in them. There are stickers for using with them, which I haven't used yet, so you can see a full 360 of what this looks like without stickers, and I'll do one with... Well, when it has them on, as well as some panel lining too. So speaking of which, let's jump right on into that. So now jumping right on into the aesthetics, and this right here is what the high-grade Gundam Death Side Hell looks like out of the box with nothing extra done. I did add the eye stickers and panel line the muzzle a little bit because they can be a little bit hard to get into later on, but for the most part, this is what it will look like out of box. No nothing, not even the stickers. So pretty much all of the color is here. Now, it is definitely worth mentioning that this is not the same quality as high grades we would have been seeing recently. Even though this is a new release-ish, it came out in the last couple of months, it is based on the high grade after colony line, which was coming out a few years ago. So that does mean the overall layering of parts, the part separation, the color separation isn't on the same level, but otherwise is quite good. The rib cage, the face, everything looking absolutely awesome, but you will have to add a little bit of extra effort in, including the stickers to get this looking perfect, because we are missing some critical colors in some places, like on that rib cage. Anyway, there's a full spin of what this will look like out of box on the left, and there's what it will look like with the stickers and panel lining on the right. The legs are a little bit on the plain side, which is what we would have seen on the standard version, the full release version of the high grade death side. So panel lining that up a little bit will definitely bring out the bit of detail that is there. The biggest difference when it comes to the stickers is mainly inside of the wings. We've got black where there was white before, and we have gray on the inner sections of the ribs. But overall, what can I say? There's just something about the death side hell design. An actual rib cage on a death like side wielding Gundam is ridiculously cool. The wings being almost bat like, not quite as bat like as we'd see on the EW redesign, but this is the classic version we would have seen on TV, which for some reason Bandai just won't release normally or in master grade form, so it is good to actually see that we did get it, even if it is premium Bandai. 
So one thing I was taken a little aback by was I didn't expect this to be in that kind of navy blue color like we would have seen with the standard death side. And actually taking a look at the official art right there, that is actually the case. It always was in a kind of dark navy blue. I guess the lighting was always so dark, it looked like it was in an almost black but it is definitely in a dark navy blue here. All the detailing is where it needs to be and it all looks phenomenal. It is definitely a very plain high grade, definitely. Like if you take any part of the armor, like right there in the knee, it is just one big plate. If you flip it around to the back, there is a big seam line going up the legs. This continues up the arm, so it is definitely simple. Everything's big plates of just one color, like on the butt flap here, on the shoulders, etc. But those are things you can definitely detail up yourself. The wings are ridiculously impressive. When they close down like that, they add the black, the red, the white. It goes so well with that rib cage in there. It is a little bit disappointing that those gray sections are stickers because it does detract from it a little bit. But everything else is as it should look on such a kick ass classic like the Death Side Hell right here. Now let's check out what it comes with. When it comes to the accessories inside the box with the Death Side Hell, we get quite a bit. We get the absolutely ridiculously over the top double beam side as well as a collapsed version of it. Death Side Shield, once again this comes with a nice effect part. And after coming off the Witch from Mercury line, I'm surprised and shocked to see this many hands inside the box. We've got a grand total of 6 to choose from. Attaching the hands is super simple, they just pop in usual ball joint attachment just like so. As for what we have, we've some widespread regular holding hands and holding hands for holding the side at a bit of an angle. These ones right here are the only kind of non-holding hand we have which are relaxed widespread hands which actually sit quite well. They're not overly dynamic but they're great for relaxed poses as well as kind of semi holding weapons. I love these hands. They're also very detailed on the underside which is always a plus. So next up in here when it comes to the accessories is the main event. This of course is that double side. Hopping on over to the wiki and what it says is the twin beam side. As implied by its name, the twin beam side has an extra beam emitter compared to the original death side's beam side. It also has a rocket thruster to give it extra momentum in use, effectively quadrupling the power of the original side. When not in use, the weapon is stored on the back skirt with its handle retracted. So yeah, just like it said there, there is a thruster on the back of this, which is a cool idea. A jet powered beam double side. We've got two of those green beam effects. Do these glow under black light? Well, they seem to be glowing under this blue light right here, so I assume that they do. A black light is something I definitely should get my hands on. When it comes to attaching the side, you've got an option of two hands. Well, technically four. So you can have it in either left or right hand, have it in standard holding hands, or use these side specific ones. These ones will hold it at a little bit of an angle for more natural slashing poses. So that's the one I'm going to go with. Like I mentioned earlier on, these nice relaxed hands right here really do work well for poses because you can just kind of flip this scythe into whatever pose you want and this way you're able to just get it oh so perfect without the need for posing another fixed hand that's holding onto the shaft. So you can get it looking good with a lot less effort. Those are great hands. This side right here also has another awesome aspect, which is the fact that these can fold ever so nicely into a multitude of different attacking positions. Now, one thing I am noticing about this is, once again, this is a circular shaft in a square hole, which does mean it can rotate in the hand a little bit when you're trying to hold onto it. But the worst aspect about this is the adapter onto a base, or should I say, where this attaches. It's between two pieces of plastic, that actually start to separate if any weight is put on it at all. So it just starts to kind of fall off, which is really not that cool at all. When the side right here is not in use, you can actually just detach it like so, and you don't actually store the actual side itself. We do get this little segment right here in its kind of stored form. It is worth noting that we do have a hollow side on this, which is a little bit of cheaping out on Bandai's part but there is the part you'll actually see. This is then stored around on the butt flap just by sliding it in like so. And actually I just mentioned that that part is the part that you'll see, but if you do flip them around to the front, which you will be seeing, it just looks a bit like that. I know most people will be s displaying their death side with the side in his hand, but that, mm, not great. And now going from not great to pretty great, this is one of the nicest Gundam shields I have ever seen. It's just such a cool design. We'll mention those side little segments, those are stickers. Underneath, however, we do have 
the red plastic color separated. All we're missing is just the yellow. So if you do detail up the yellow, this can be used remotely and that is why there is thrusters on the back, but there isn't really any way in which to do that. Included with this kit, of course. I'm using this right here, which is Good Smile Company Simple Stand, but any stand with a three millimeter hole will do it. And you can just pop it on just like so for displaying that remotely used or launched like this right here. Again, the shield attaches super simple. It's just a normal old peg into a normal old hole and it attaches on just like this. However, this is one incredibly detailed, beautiful looking shield. This looks so, so cool and definitely not like much else. Also, once again, you can add in the beam effect. So you just open on up these clippy, clippy bits like so. And that beam effect just slides on in and sticks right in there. Just like that looking absolutely killer. So now jumping into the articulation as well as the overall build strength on this. The build strength is quite good besides that annoying little base attachment part back there that tends to fall off. But besides that, it's not too bad. Can kind of go like this as well over time. The legs could be a little bit stronger, but that is kind of usually the case sometimes with some polycap joints. On the whole though, it's okay. Now let's get into that pose. Overall, the articulation on the high-grade Death Side Hell is definitely classic Gunpla feeling. A lot of limited joints here and there. Nothing really can go too far when it comes to range of motion. The most impressive aspect is probably the tilt we've got inside of the waist unit, which will tilt the torso, and the arms and upper arms are limited too, and the wings can get in the way every now and then. But let's check everything out one by one. The neck is the usual standard giggity 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 goo polycap. You don't get a whole lot out of it because the shape of the head there's all the way up, all the way down, side to side, mildly limited, but not too bad. The shoulder polycap is aligned front to back like so. Shoulder is just a ball in socket, so that's what you get forward and back out of it. Full rotation inside of it and a little bit of wiggle. At the arm, you can't get it all the way up without rotating it because the upside of the shoulder does get in the way somewhat. But then again, there's usually stuff above that. Full rotation at the upper arm, double jointed bend at the elbow, basic ball joint wrist. Down the torso, we do have a little bit of an ab crunch, but not much at all. We've got rotation all the way around right here on a polycap joint, but it's this nice little hinge inside of here. It is on a C-clip, so it can loosen up over time, but it is this that gives us a nice little bit of movement forward right here, just to get a little bit of an ab crunch out of it. The butt flap can wiggle a little bit. Side skirts can move up and down as well as rotate forward and back. The front skirting armors, these come attached on the runner, but you can separate them like so. Double layered, which is always nice looking. Inside the hip, we do have a moving forward and back mechanism in there. And as for the kicks, there it is all the way up to the front, a little bit blocked by the front skirting. There it is all the way out to the back, so not bad. Moving these skirtings out of the way and there is the full splits although extremely extremely loose a little bit of rotation at the upper leg actually quite a bit it goes all the way back to front but not the whole way around i've always loved the knee design and the high grade death scythe it's usually just a single point bend right here but we do have an almost hidden second joint dislodge the knee armor just like so and that unlocks a second bend further down which really segregates out the leg at the ankle then a little bit of forward and back right here no side to side except for down at this ball joint which does limit it in some ground poses we do have a little bit of a toe bend downwards and upwards just like so underneath the wings we do have the standard death side backpack and this can swing down like this to keep it out of the way of the big shield wings they attach usually onto this little segment right here, which is a little bit of a hinge, and they just attach on like a simple peg in hole like that. I will mention these can interfere somewhat with the V fin, so be careful that you don't catch it and break it on those. And as for the motion we get on the wings, they can move down and up just like so, rotate back to front, which I never expected that they would. And then each of these is on a hinge, so that it can come down a hinge like so. This one can come down on a hinge as well. And this one can come up and down and rotate back and forward. We also do have a peg attaching in here so that can pivot up and down as well to get different poses out of it. So you can have it wide open like so or all closed down in that super death side hell kind of way. 
So anyway, that right there is it for the review, and the Death Side Hell is just like what we would have seen from the rest of the High Grade After Colony line. This definitely does feel a little bit dated by 2023 standards, so for me, this is getting silver tier. So it is an all-round decent enough kit, but not one without its issues. When it comes to the pros, this looks beautiful. The different use of colors, the navy blue and black and white, really does give a really unique feel with splashes of yellow and red. When it comes to the accessories, these are all great, tons of hands. The side and the shield are absolutely beautiful. When it comes to the articulation, you'll get most basic poses out of it, which is good. But when it does come to the downsides of all of that, aesthetically, we do have a whole lot of stickers all over the place. That is probably the only down point there. When it comes to the accessories, the tucked away version of the side, the retracted version could be a little bit better, not the biggest complaint. But when it comes to the biggest down point on this, it is the build strength and the articulation. The reliance on polycaps does give it a bit of a unreliable kind of feel, especially in the hips. And on the whole, you're not really going to be getting the greatest poses out of it. But essentially still a very good kit and the best looking t well the only tv version of death side hell by bandai that itself makes this totally worth it anyway as always thank you so so much for watching make sure to come back for more gunpla reviews and i will see you next time Once again, this video right here and none of these videos would be possible without each and every single one of you guys who watches my videos and special thanks to those of you who are supporting me over on Patreon and here on the channel memberships, including 10 Soldier YT, Caleb Engelhart, Dashil Marmion, Go Little Rockstar, Joe, Lawrence Seahack, Orgy59061 and Van Fawn.